Our topic for this session is renal infections. Our first case is of a horseshoe kidney with cystitis and pyelonephritis. We start with fairly obvious hydronephrosis and a wedge-shaped striated hypodensity in the left renal parenchyma consistent with focal pyelonephritis. On this lower image, there is a very thick parenchymal isthmus to this horseshoe kidney, which is also demonstrating those reduced perfusion changes consistent with focal pyelonephritis. In the pelvis, we have bilateral hydroureter, and the bladder demonstrates irregular wall thickening as well as layering tiny gravel-like stones. Of course, with horseshoe kidney, patients are at risk for increased stone formation as well as pyelonephritis. There the pyelonephritis, and in the bladder, the gravelly dependent stones. So that is a case of a horseshoe kidney with cystitis and multifocal pyelonephritis. Our next case is a staghorn calculus with associated proteus infection. There is a branching collecting system calcification here in the left kidney, which represents our staghorn calculus. There is also moderate hydronephrosis, suggesting that is an obstructing calcification. Lastly, there is a delay in the nephrogram on the left, suggesting that that obstruction has progressed and resulted in delayed perfusion as well. And this was the classic proteus infection superimposed on this staghorn calculus. You can see its branching characteristics very nicely here on the cine. It extends into essentially every infundibulum of the collecting system. And of course, there are these hypodensities in the parenchyma as well that look like renal abscesses or potentially focal nephronias. So that is a staghorn calculus with superimposed proteus infection. Our next case is of xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis essentially a classic case of XGP with marked enlargement of the right kidney, multiple loculated fluid densities within that expanded parenchyma, and a central nephrolith, a finding essentially uh, required for this diagnosis. Another helpful finding is beyond the renal enlargement is this extension into the psoas. There is fluid extending from the kidney, and there is a small focus of gas suggesting it has an infectious etiology. Over 50% of XGPs have extra renal involvement, and so it is this in conjunction with the other findings that truly makes this diagnosis. Here, speaking of extra renal involvement, more extra renal gas and fluid here in the retroperitoneum. So here on the cine, that marked enlargement of the right kidney, the central stone, and the extra renal extension, both medially and inferiorly. So that is a case of xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis. Our next case is of meningococcal sepsis. This is a highly unusual case that fortunately was called correctly by our radiologist in real time. There is blatant right lower lobe consolidation consistent with a severe pneumonia. Lower down there is thinning, flattening of the IVC consistent with profound hypotension. In addition, probably related to underperfusion, but possibly also related to some degree of hepatitis, there is periportal hepatic edema. 
Lower still, we again see the flattened IVC, the periportal edema in the liver, and marked underperfusion of the kidneys, which are showing essentially no contrast enhancement at all. In addition, there's marked increased density within the adrenal glands, as well as periadrenal stranding. This is consistent either with adrenal inflammation, underperfusion, or possibly even hemorrhage. Although these are so adrenoform, I suspect it is enhancement uh, related to the involvement of the adrenal glands. Again, the hypodense renal parenchyma here, uh, showing essentially no contrast opacification, and consistent with nephritis or severe hypotension. So there are the adrenal, the flattened IVC. Here again, the right lower lobe pneumonia and the underperfused kidneys, quite striking. So this patient was profoundly hypotensive, did have a striking rash and was accurately diagnosed as meningococcal sepsis, this being essentially the waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome. Our next case is infectious mononucleosis in a child. There's marked enlargement of the spleen to tip you to the diagnosis. In addition, there are multiple foci of heterogeneous uh, renal parenchymal hypodensity that look for all the world like underperfusion or more likely multifocal pyelonephritis. What this ultimately amounts to in this case is a viral nephritis. Lastly, an important finding here is a paravertebral soft tissue fluid collection consistent with an abscess, and that, in this case, is a manifestation of the immune suppression that goes along with EBV infection. So there is the viral nephritis, and here, the soft tissue abscess. So that is a case of infectious mononucleosis causing viral nephritis and with immune suppression, a soft tissue abscess. Our next case is of HIV nephropathy. Of course, unfortunately, you rarely see HIV nephropathy on a contrasted scan because they frequently present with reduced renal function. You can still appreciate here on this non-contrast scan the enlargement and the heterogeneous striation of the renal parenchyma bilaterally. It's always tempting to attribute this to some infiltrating process. Interestingly, I looked up, uh, reminded myself of my old board knowledge, that renal lymphoma most commonly presents with multiple renal masses. So uh, as far as infiltrative processes go, that is at least one that should not be suggested here. And this is a pretty typical pattern for HIV nephropathy. The enlargement and striation are essentially uh, diagnostic of this condition. So that is a case of HIV nephropathy. Our next case is an overt, long-standing case of renal tuberculosis. There is extensive calcification of what remains of this kidney. Interestingly, more inferiorly, there is some small preservation of renal parenchyma and a fluid collection suggesting a potential focus of active disease. This made for a pretty striking three-dimensional reconstruction. And there again is the extensive lobulated calcifi calcification of that left kidney. And there it is. And there that small focus of fluid suggesting the possibility of active infection. So that was a case of classic renal tuberculosis. Our last case 
is of genitourinary schizosomiasis. There are rounded calcifications within the kidneys, and there is marked bilateral hydronephrosis. The thing that makes this diagnosis, however, are these peripheral, mural, ureteral, and bladder calcifications, which are essentially diagnostic of schizosomiasis infection. There are a large number of Somalian refugees in America now, and this is a disease endemic in that region. And so it is something to keep in mind when you know the specific origins of the patient you're evaluating. Note those ureteral calcifications present in the wall all throughout their length and all throughout the bladder as well. So that is a case of schizosomiasis. And that concludes this session on renal infections.